Welcome back, folks and friends. Connecting Dots here. It's Monday, January 26, 2015, and I've got some really good news here. So you know how I've, I've been after a beautiful girl by Dana and the other gentleman that funded this whole um, nine-day trek along the Sunshine Coast. You, if you may recall, that's how beautiful girl by Dana started telling everyone that the ocean was dead, dying. Uh, there's only 1% of the 1% that's supposed to be there. That's correct. 99.9% of the marine life on the west coast had disappeared and this is after them going for nine days along the sunshine coast uh, they did 200 kilometers of the west coast while we actually end up finding out they only spent three and a half hours in a rented boat one day but anyhow they went out for these nine days and i told you how this whole tour was funded by this gentleman by the name of terry daniel and if you go watch the video here uh, where I talk about how the Fukushima fraud had contributed to Jeff Palco's death, which I'll get back into in this video here because this pertains to Kevin D. Blanche, um, I also spoke about how, um, well, some, some things had been taken from uh, a person. If you go watch the video, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. The good news is those tools have been returned. So, um, you know, I'm not saying it's that video that pushed his, uh, him to giving the tools back, but I do know that I'm sure he's watching the videos, and when the police came knocking on the door, as I said in that video that the police were going to be knocking on his door soon, I guess he realized soon after that, oh shit. So, smart move, Terry. Smart move. Excellent, excellent good news. You know, now if only you can make a video and show people how much marine life is right there in your own backyard. Ah, uh, don't worry. We got some of those videos coming up anyways. Okay, so the other, you know, news here is <laughs> Kevin D. Blanche. Oh, boy, oh, boy. So you may recall here I'm after Jeff Palco, some of the money that he's been scammed from these people. I, I spoke about how a beautiful girl by Dana got over $16,000. Uh, from Jeff Palco. Jeff Palco actually took out a, a, line of, uh, took, um, a line of credit out on his home, you know, and he has his son now um, who's all by himself, no father, and I've decided, you know, we're going to do something here. The YouTube community, we're solid, we're good people, we have good hearts, we're going to do the right thing, and we're going to go after some of that money, and one of the corrupt people that ripped them off was this fellow here you're looking at the screen, Kevin D. Blanche. You may recall here, Kevin's been the same promoter of it's Fukushima, it's dead, it's killing, the ocean is dead, it's dying right now, yet not a single story of any of the fish dying off the west coast, uh, sorry, off the coast of Japan. In fact, if you've been watching my videos, I've been showing you how Japan's been testing the fish or here and there and been finding increasing levels of radiation in the fish. In fact, the last fish they caught in 2014, I believe, you go watch it, uh, go see that thread at connectingdots1.com. I basically showed how the last fish was like 5,000 times above the legal limit. Not a dead fish, a live fish that a fisherman caught off the coast of Japan. This is why I'm trying to raise funds for a gamma spectrometer here over at Connecting Dots 2 and Connecting Dots 3. That's what this is all about here. It's all about funding real crowdsource activism, okay? Because our government's not testing the proper things. I mentioned in my previous video, if you watched it, how just recently in August uh, 2014, 50 samples were taken off the West Coast, and already out of the first 20 tested, 10 of them came back positive for Fukushima radiation and I went on to say how our local governments will always say that the radiation is low in the water. Absolutely, that's correct. It will always be low in the water. However, the fish, which is what I've talked about in this video, how the fish bioaccumulated, a term that they are all very well aware of and that's why the Food and Drug Administration went and lied about the safety of the food in Alaska. If you watch that video, I pointed out how they tested the wrong species, fish that don't migrate out into the Pacific Ocean. So yes, fish do live in radiation, but Mr. Scarecrow here, he's out to tell you that everything is dead, and this time here, it's the mass death of seabirds in the USA. And if you haven't done your research about that, or if you've been stuck on Energy News, or the rest of these people here telling you that all the birds are dead on the West Coast, don't believe that stuff. In fact, I'll even educate you on mass death. How do I know about this stuff? Well, I've been on YouTube for a long time, and I was here pre-2012, so I know all these scary boogeymans and all the prophecy and everything that they've been fear-mongering since 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011, and as we're getting closer to 2012, they start chiming it up even more. Yeah, now 2012 is all gone, and the Nibiru is, well, there's no more magic there. What can I say? So they have to move along. So in this latest one here, uh, what does he say? 
part, I want to talk about the so-called mystery goo that's in the San Francisco Bay that's killing the birds, the dead eagles, these mystery diseases. How long are we going to stay in denial? The dead starfish. The eagles have not come back. And people say, oh, they go with this is a thousand years. Yeah, the eagles, uh, that's right, they fly around. So when there's a drought and there's less prey, uh, and they do like every other birds, flock off elsewhere. That's just simple. Uh, we were nomads. Uh, the birds use their wings and they go elsewhere. So yeah, the, the eagles aren't going to stick around. So there's lots of eagles here on the West Coast. But what's more important here, well, again, it's you go watch the video. It's all about flashing the arms up and down. No real data like you're going to get in my videos, okay? That's the one big thing many of you, many of you have woken up here, how these fear-mongering scare tactics only work when they can't produce the paper. They can't produce the video. They have no real substance, no juice to their video. It's all me with my arms, shaking it up and down, and telling you that, guess what, folks? This time here, it's exploded. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm getting sick of this shit. So basically here again in this latest video, as you can see by the date, he just uploaded this here 48 minutes ago. And again, it's the same garbage again. Unit 3 has blown up. Do you know how many times uh, Unit 4, uh, he said Unit 5, uh, I think he's even said Unit 6, but I know definitely Unit 4 has blown up uh, probably about three times according to Kevin D. Blanche, and Unit 5 has blown up once. How many, like seriously, and then you go check the cameras the following day, and what I mean by cameras is that we have live cameras here. Okay, so, and this is what he's going by. He's looking at this stuff here, and oh, it's, it's not snow, it's blown up, and that's Unit 3 right there. It's not blown up because on the very next day, every single time he says it, you can go watch it. They're back at work again. No, he's going to tell you, no, they cut the footage. I'm like, okay, well, where's the burn marks then when they turn the camera back on? There's none. Like I said, these people use their arms. They flail around, show their faces, no work. So big on making faces, big on our movements, very, very little proof to back up anything he says. Here's the proof. So mass death seabirds. Has there been deaths unprecedented? Uh, I don't know about that. Starving? Uh, I don't think so. In fact, if you've been watching my videos this summer, I've been making lots of videos on the all kinds of stories coming out as far as fishermen, scuba divers, uh, the, 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 the salmon runs here on the west coast increasing year after year. The last th three years have been getting bigger and bigger. More fish, more fish coming inland. What can I say? That's not an indication that the fishery is falling. Those fish are going out feeding on something for a couple of years, two, three years, and coming back inland to lay their eggs because there's substance out there in the ocean. So I don't believe they're starving, but here's the indicator. As I said before here, I live right on British Columbia. So I even remember when this story came out and one of the things they talked about in a newspaper was the fact that all the birds were young. And they talked about, and those of you that listened to, to Beautiful Girl by Dana, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, where Dana's been talking about unprecedented, unprecedented storms here on the West Coast. That's what's been taking place this winter. Unprecedented storms. And even Dana has been saying it, that he's been stuck up in P Prince Rupert, unable to get out countless times because of the, star the, the storms. So the storms, um, they take out the young birds. In fact, if you go a little further down here, you see last year, beginning about Halloween, thousands of what? Juvenile. Okay? This is the key factor in all these stories. But hold on. I know a lot of you, oh, I want more proof. Okay. So again, uh, this story here, mass animal die-offs are on the rise, killing billions and raising questions. Does it say Fukushima there? No, okay? Uh, keep track of this, okay? Uh, it talks about uh, huge animal die-offs along with disease outbreaks and other population stressors are happening more often. Are they really? Well, like I said, it's all about you doing your own research. Don't just follow one newspaper, but if you are going to follow just one place, Let's do some research on it, okay? So here we have with stories here where they've been talking about the sea urchins, okay, that were vanishing in the Caribbean. And you're saying, ha, 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 we got you, we know. No, you don't. Like I said, it's all about doing a study, uh, doing some research on what you're about to 
and bark in here before you start making outrageous claims. So a little further down there, in this, they talk about a study that was published this week here, and researchers reviewed historical records of 727 mass die-offs from 1940 to 2012 and found that over time these events have become more common for birds and marine invertebrates and fish. The numbers remain unchanged for mammals and decrease for amphibians and reptiles. Now remember 1940 to 2012, okay? Don't tell me that all the, they all died here, that all these 727 happened in the year 2011 to 2012. Absolutely not. But here's another thing. Another thing. We need to do some math here because this is important here. They're telling you that uh, from 1940 to 2012, so we'll take 2012 minus 1940, 72 years of data, and you've had 727, and I know some of you already know what this works out to, but I'm doing it anyway. So 727 die offs divided by 72 years of data rounds off to, that's right, roughly 10 massive die-offs per year. That's why I said I've been out here for a long time on YouTube. I've heard all the scary boogeymans and all of their stories why it's the end of the world, it's the end of times, get close to God, watch out. So at this point, I'm not sure if you noticed, but uh, you know, it says here the big die-offs can per permanently change food webs. That's important, okay? Now it goes on to say here that 90% of the sea urchins disappeared from the Caribbean in 1983 thanks to a pathogen. Same thing as we found with the starfish, death of the starfish. And as I rec mentioned before, I got an interview coming up um, with uh, Cornell University doctor, uh, Professor Drew Harvell. And uh, she'll be talking about her study and the research on the death of the starfish on the west coast and how it's a pathogen so far. That's what it indicates. So um, next story here. They go on to say that it's unclear what's making diseases more common. Okay, remember the pathogens and why red tides happen more often. This is the other thing I was talking about, you know, uh, when the ocean warms or certain species, they're used to living in cold water, so when they, it warms up, it, it, there's a die-off. As I mentioned, if you watched my videos on the bleaching, coral bleaching that's taking place, it's not Fukushima. That's another type of event that's taking place in the ocean, ocean that they've been tracking since, well, what, I had data going back to 1997. So what can I say, folks? People don't want to tell you the truth. They want to scare, scare you, okay? Again, here, 40,000 seabirds after a storm, okay? A year of storms. This is important. This is in August 2014, and this is Britain's seabirds, nowhere near Fukushima, okay? I'm just trying to... You know, there's so many stories here, the death birds again here. Uh, this one here was uh, Bay of Biscayne. Um, it's, I don't know, it's, you know, that was earlier on in, in 2014. So, again, uh, this is on the Atlantic coast of France. Uh, you know, between uh, the shores of Britain and Spain. Um, they've been dying off all over, all over the place, okay? So again here, uh, Seabird Rack of 2014, uh, they talk about, uh, you know, birds going all the way back to 1969 that, that have been dying off in massive numbers. So it, it's an ongoing situation here, and you may notice here, where does it get into it? It talks about the 1960s here at some point. Uh, hold on a second. Oh yes, right here. Okay, so during the 1960s, there was widespread concern about the toxic chemicals, and it was thought that some kind of poisoning might have been responsible for the wreck, not least because there was no sign of any other mortality factor. So what can I say? Um, it, it's the seabirds, uh, yeah, they may have had problems with oil and whatnot, but this is a, something that's been going on for a long time in our history, and uh, they don't want to show you that. They just want to tell you, watch out, it's, it's the end of the world, you know? Like I say, you just... Page 194. Animal disease arises. Prophecy, December 15, 2011. The Lord reveals that a new surge of animal disease will arise on the earth shortly. Zephaniah 1 verse 2 and 3. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. 
December 31st, 2012. Up to 300 days. So, Prison Planet and the rest of these guys stay away. Um, what can I say? They're out to scare you. He's going out to the west co east coast, so maybe you can ask Kevin D. Blanche to check into why the dolphins were dying in 2013, and certainly, <laughs> certainly not Fukushima. Okay, Connecting Dots 1, that's where you can join up with the rest of the Truth Gang. Take care, folks.